Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Okay, in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about something really quick. And it's something that perhaps I didn't make clear enough in some of my other videos. I, I thought I did. I kind of went over and looked at it. And, and I know I've mentioned this before. But uh, I think it needs to be pounded home a little bit. Of course, in a non-violent way. Uh, and that is that when you are doing image transfers using the quick transfer paper it is so important that the surface that you are going to transfer the image on is flat and smooth now when i mean flat and smooth if you have something that is curved that's fine as long as it's curved flat in other words it, it doesn't have rough texture to it. It doesn't have divots and scratches and raised grain and all these other things. And the reason that I wanted to, to bring this out in this new video is because, um, interestingly enough, I got an order from a customer that just turns out, happens to just live in the neighborhood just across the road from me. You know, small world, right? And so uh, she had written in and said, hey, you know, uh, I'm having some trouble here. Uh, the image isn't, you know, coming out 100%. There are some spots missing. Here, I'll show you the photos that she sent me and you can see for yourself. Okay, so you notice there's a few spots missing there. Okay, and... When I try to explain this through email and stuff, sometimes it's a little difficult to get a point across. So I offered to demonstrate in person because, I mean, you're my neighbor, you're right over there. So uh, I says, you know, hey, if you're, if you're there with your family, be more than happy to come over and demonstrate. And so I did. I went over there and I saw what the problem was immediately. And that was that she had these... Uh, they're two by, they're two by, um, they're not two by fours, so I, they're probably a little more like two by sixes, uh, but they were cut into these square pieces. And when I put my hand across it, I could feel lots of ridges and stuff. It was not a smooth wooden surface. Now, her surface was also painted, which is not an issue, but I will point out some tips as far as dealing with painted wood surfaces. But the surface itself needs to be smooth. It needs to be sanded smooth, or you can buy it already smooth. For example, uh, these little squares, like this one here, I think is called a, um, I think this is 4x4 four four or 5x5, five five. I'm not quite sure. I have smaller ones that are 3x3s. Three and um, I even have even larger ones. And you get these at hobby shops or you can get them online or at Amazon or whatever. And they're relatively cheap. I mean, it's, you get a whole, I got like a whole ton of them here that I didn't pay that much for. And these already come pre-sanded and smooth. Okay. Um, I even demonstrated it in another video using the Arteza round um, wood pieces they look like you know from a tree and you cut them in slices and those you know you you want to you want to sand them down a little bit because they are a little on the rough side and i got a video that i'll be doing in, in not far from now or long from now uh, maybe a week or two i don't know um, where uh, we go into my garage because i purchased uh, a few of these um slabs um I don't know if they're called slabs, but, um, you know, if you got a trunk of a tree and you just cut slices, so I guess you call them trunk slices, I, I don't know. But um, I didn't store them right, apparently, because I'm such a knucklehead. You're supposed to, like, store um, fresh cut wood, you know, with little pieces of slats for airflow, whatever. I didn't do that, so some of them buckled, some of them split, whatever. But I happen to have a planer, so I'm going to run it through the planer. I'll videotape all that. Once I get it plain, we're going to sand it. I'll videotape that. And then um, I will do a transfer on it. It's going to be one of the cool project videos that I'm going to do in the future for the Image Transfers with Rick's channel. Um, but for right now, we're talking about just 
making sure that the surface that you're going to transfer to is smooth. Take sandpaper to it. Now she did sand hers, but unfortunately because of how aggressive the surface was on that wood, it was still very, very rough. It needs a serious sanding down or planing, uh, as it were. If you're going to use coarse wood from your, your you know, hardware store, uh, that stuff isn't really prepared for um, the purpose of, you know, hobby stuff. So that's more building materials. You can use it, just make sure that you prepare the surface. So I'm going to, here we have, again, a wooden surface that is smooth and clean. So remember that smooth and clean. If you, if you got any divots, any in, indentations, uh, cracks or whatever, you need to do something about that if you want a 100% transfer. Because if you take a look at this illustration here that I drew, um, you can see that the horizontal line represents the surface of the material, such as this uh, piece of wood. And then you see those little divots along the way when you try to roll your brayer, you know, over it, it is not going to be able to push the image into those crevices. You know, so uh, I explained it, I demonstrated by bringing a few of these little things with me and uh, did a complete 100% transfer right there the first time uh, so that uh, she and her family can see how it is done, okay? So let's do one now since we're here anyway, right? Um, even though you've probably seen it in another video, I'm going to do another one right here. And I printed out a, you know, a couple of little neat uh, positive thinking things like this one. Even your coffee is surprised you woke up this early and, and this one down here. Be stronger than your excuses. Now I realize that, let's see, with this coffee one, let's see. Yeah, it. I think it will cover most of it anyway, but uh, that one looks even better. So if you can see, of course, this camera here, um, that image goes perfect with this size. Uh, the other image I printed, I guess I printed, you know, maybe I should have printed a little bigger because it's going to have white down here and or it's going to have nothing transferred up here or down here. Um, so let's just do this one here. Be stronger than your excuses. Now again, once you have your clean, smooth wood surface, in this case it's unpainted, so that means it will dry faster than a painted surface, and that's because an unpainted surface is more porous than a painted surface. Paint or lacquer or anything like that can be transferred on, no problem, I've done it many times. But it acts as a seal over the paint, and so it doesn't dry. The gel medium does not dry that fast when there is no escape for it, you know, for air to flow through. And the paint does that, it kind of makes a, a seal. So you have to heat it up for a couple of more minutes with a hair dryer as opposed to a unpainted. So that's another that's a tip right there you have to remember. I use my finger because I want to feel every inch of this surface that it is not dry or almost dry like it gets sticky. If it if you're using gel medium, which is what I recommend, um, and if and it starts to feel sticky in some of the areas, you may not get a transfer there because that's an area that has pretty much gone into the dry stage. All right, and the bigger the image you transfer, the little more race of time you have to deal with. Okay, you may want to go a little thicker with the gel at first, and then then thin it out just before you're about ready to do the transfer only because if the area is really big if you're doing the whole page to make some big image well when you're in one end of the you know surface here doing this the other side is already getting dry because you're doing such a big area I don't personally like doing big transfers I like doing small ones but some of you like to do big ones 
And if you can't do it in sections, if it just wouldn't look right, then just be mindful that you need to make sure that no area is dry or sticky. It has to feel wet, not sticky. As long as it feels wet, then the uh, transfer would adhere to the gel medium. And the edges are also very tricky. So make sure you get those edges if you're wanting, you know, to make sure the whole thing is covered. And also with your finger, you can tell if there's any hard bits. Because uh, those are no good to have in there. Okay, so this all feels nice and wet. And as you can see, it's a very thin layer. But it's still wet. That's the key. It has to still be wet. And so I'm going to have to hurry here because if it starts drying, it's going to start getting sticky and dry. And, and I wish I had this cut already, but I didn't. Well, let's do it this way since I didn't bother to cut my sheet. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to press this on this way. Okay. I'm going to press down. Try not to let it slide. Whatever you do, don't let it slide. Okay. And once you feel that it's adhered on there pretty good, all right, let me get this turned over. You want to start pressing from the center out, like so. Okay. Get all that excess off. All right, and then don't let there be any air bubbles. Now, if you use too much gel medium, you can go the opposite direction and have too much. And if you do that, it, it's like wetting the paper. It start wrinkling up because it's wet, okay? So you don't want that. Now make sure you don't have any air bubbles. This is important. Get those edges in there if that's what you want to, you know, make sure is included. Get that all in there, okay? Now take a hair dryer. And remember, this is an unpainted wood surface, so it's going to take 30 seconds, 45 seconds to dry. If it's painted, it could take two, three minutes. Put your hair dryer on high. To start drying and if you want you can keep rolling another thing I like to do is use my fingers and make sure that there are no lifted areas anywhere on here okay also this allows me to tell when it's dry and I can feel that it's already getting dry so I'm going to do about 30, 45 seconds of drying here. And it feels like I've got pretty good adhesion. Okay, so it feels dry. I think that's dry. Now another thing I'm going to do because I didn't bother to cut this first, which is what you want to do, is you want to cut it first. I'm going to cut it now before I wet the paper, otherwise I'll get this other image wet and I won't be able to use it. So I want to save this image for transferring later. So let, me, let me separate those two at birth. There we go. I'm going to move that off to the side. Okay. So now that this is done, I can leave it like this, walk away, come back an hour, three hours, five hours, whatever. Uh, I do know that um, from experience that if you do leave it on for a day or two, whatever, that it just may be stuck on there so good that you may have to do two or three pills to get it off after moistening it. But other than that, it's still going to come off. It's just that if you, the easiest way is to take care of it within the first five, ten minutes. You know, uh, it's, it's going to come off easier. Now, here's what you want to make sure, okay? Before you moisten it, have a piece, a clean piece of uh, paper towel. And I'll explain why in a second here. But the first thing you want to do to get this off is take a wet sponge or something and completely moisten the back of the image here and you want that water to get absorbed through the paper since this is a cotton bond paper 
it will absorb that water really well, which you want. Okay. Now, when it's wet, it's weak. In other words, it'll have a tendency to tear a lot easier because it's it's wet. But if you take a paper towel like this and you take up the excess, this will in fact, in effect, uh, it will strengthen the paper. Okay, the paper will become stronger by taking up the excess moisture just like this and uh, you have a very good chance of it peeling off in one peel which is always nice to see. So take the the edge here and start peeling it back across itself like this just nice and carefully and as you can see it's coming off in one piece because we took that dry clean paper towel and took up the excess. And if you'll notice here, that is a 100% nothing left behind transfer. All right. Just because I made sure of pressing it down, drying it well, and then I moistened and then took off um, the excess water. And doing all those little things, and of course making sure I have a nice smooth surface. I'm just cleaning off the excess glue that's on here. A little messy. Let me give you the other clean one here. But here you can see. See that? Okay, so that came out 100% perfect with the exception that it's got glue on the edge that I gotta clean off here. But there you go. Okay, look at that. All right, see that there? Ooh. So be stronger than your excuses, all right? And so no excuses if you follow these suggestions, these tips that I just gave you, you should have these very successful 100% transfers using this really cool paper, the quick transfer paper, all right? Nice, clean, all done within three, four minutes. Boom, done, move on with life. All right, well that's it. That's all I wanted to do was uh, share those tips and do one more transfer for you here. And the next time I do a video, uh, hopefully it's going to be on those log slices that I, I bought from uh, a local dealer here that chopped down her tree and sliced them up and sold them out of a Target parking lot. <laughs> that's where I bought them. Okay, well, thanks again for watching Images with Image Transfers with Ricks. Uh, this is a very young channel, so of course, uh, really appreciate it if you subscribe. Click the I like them button there, and uh, also the bell, because that just lets you know when I upload my next video. You don't want to miss that, so I'll see you next time. Be stronger than your excuses. Woo, yes, sir. <laughs>